Hola, buenos dias. Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl here, Daniela, Miss Four Lizard. And I'm filming a book look today. It's been a while since I filmed um, a book look. It's a series on my channel that I debuted years ago when I was still doing beauty makeup project panning on my channel. And like I said, when I made my like complete evolutionary transition from makeup and project panning to uh, paper crafting and essentially a channel that was all about all of my interests, I wanted to um, I wanted to bring everything that I'm interested in to my channel. And right now, even though I'm really into planning and paper crafting and my channel is like 90% that right now, I still want to produce content um, about, you know, the various things that I'm interested in. And I'm still interested in makeup and beauty. I still really like those hobbies and I'm still really interested in reading and talking about books with you all. So it just... <sighs> Like, I don't know, I've been feeling the need to do something besides like planning and paper crafting lately. And that's why I am so glad I didn't like name my channel like something plans or something about planning and paper crafting because I want this channel to be like a uniquely me space and a space where I can share all of my interests with you all. So anyway, I'm gonna film a book look today and book looks are essentially book reviews combined with like a makeup and beauty tutorial get ready with me kind of thing and it's just essentially bringing the worlds of like books and makeup together because i love both of those worlds so so much and i thought it would be fun to create a makeup look inspired by a book i'm reading and then talk to you all about the book that you know inspired the look and my take on it and what i thought about it so i'm going to be doing a book look um for this book um, I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erica L. Sanchez. I actually read this at the very beginning of the year, so it's definitely been a while since I finished it, but it was a book that I wanted to do a book look for, and I held on to this book for that express purpose to do a book look. And so the makeup look that you're seeing today is a makeup look based off of this book. And after I talk a little bit about the book here with you, um, I'm gonna transition into actually showing you how I created this look at the end of the video. So if you're interested in seeing how I created the look, just keep on watching um, till the end. But for now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the book and what's it about, how I felt about it, and how, um, how it inspired the makeup look I'm wearing today. So first off, the book I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter is a YA fiction um, about uh, a second generation Mexican girl named Julia. Yes, Julia. It's been a while, I'm telling you. And it's set in Chicago, modern day, and it's, you know, a coming of age story, I would say, about a coming of age story, particularly from a young Mexican girl's experience living in the United States um, and being a child of immigrant Mexican parents. And it's also very much a narrative that's situated in the working class. So she's definitely um, kind of in the lower income and that experience, the socioeconomic experience of being um, working class, lower income, Mexican child of immigrants and um, is and how that experience that colors her upbringing is the narrative of the story. So that's how this story starts off. That's Julia's background. That's her lived experience. That's her family situation. And at the very beginning of the novel, um, we find out that Julia's sister Olga um, has passed away. She was accidentally um, killed during a traffic collision and the story starts off at this really crucial moment where Julia and her family are trying to navigate and reconcile their beloved sister daughter's death. 
And Olga, Julia's older sister, was the quote-unquote perfect Mexican daughter. She never left um, her parents' house. She was always someone that like just uh, followed orders and just stuck around at home and didn't cause too much trouble and did as, did as she was told. And it was very much in contrast to Julia, who's always trying to be independent, do her own thing, have adventures, go explore. Julia doesn't like to um, follow orders or to stay silent and quiet and obedient. She's very much an independent, like, you know, freedom loving woman. And what I really liked about the story was that it really explored the, the cultural expectations that uh, Mexican families often have of daughters and sons. Me being Mexican and growing up in a very traditional Mexican household, like I understand a lot of what Julia went through and kind of her resentment towards her parents for being so controlling and so rigid in terms of what they expected from their daughters just because they were female. In more traditional Mexican families, um, there's very strict standards and expectations for women versus men. And women are kind of expected to be more of this like wife and mother role, to be obedient, to be quiet, to be do to be um, to do as they're told, and to just like not rock the boat and not you know challenge any societal norms and men are expected of course to be like breadwinners providers this like strong and silent type that just are supposed to kind of direct and order around women because women can't really um you know take care of themselves or have you know aren't smart enough to to take care of themselves so at the very beginning of the story olga this perfect mexican daughter dies and she leaves um julia you know as the only child left to the family and it's very much a story of julia's trying to i guess come to terms with her sister's passing but also come to terms with her own place in this traditional familial structure and trying to navigate you know family expectations and her own independence but alongside that, um, throughout the story, Julia is also trying to figure out the mystery that surrounds Olga's death because apparently Olga's been hiding this huge secret that no one was aware of until she died. And it wasn't until she died and, you know, uh, the family had to kind of go through her things and organize all her affairs that Julia discovers like that there's this huge secret that her sister was hiding and that she wasn't the perfect Mexican daughter that Julia always thought her to be. And so throughout the story, Julia is trying to uncover um, that secret. Overall, I gave the book four out of five stars on Goodreads. I did really enjoy it. I liked the story. The only reason I didn't give it five out of five stars was I think personal. Um, this is very much, I think, a book geared for a young adult audience. It is marketed as a YA book. I don't read YA very often because I find that YA's writing style is a little bit too simplistic for me at times. I think YA authors really try to make their writing accessible and digestible for younger audiences, and I think sometimes that really um, detracts from the writing style. Again, I'm like a writing snob and so I really like, you know, really beautifully constructed language, very creative language, and I feel like this wasn't written very well. I think it was a good story. I liked the narrative. I liked the characters in it for the most part. But overall, the writing for me was kind of uh, just a little bit too plain and simple for me to really feel um, moved by the book. So for the makeup look, I decided to go with a look that I would do all the time in high school. I was obsessed with dark black smoky eyes and I would do like a black and silver look any special occasion like graduation dances dates like i would just my go-to was this like black and silver smoky look and i don't know why because i don't think it looks that good on me and i i don't like how it looks right now i cannot wait to wipe this makeup off my face and i would always wear like this super like 
striped bubblegum pink blush that I'm kind of wearing today and a nude lip with this L'Oreal gloss that I was obsessed with. Not the same one, just a different one. So this is a look I would definitely have rocked in high school. This is something you would have seen me in, like walking down my high school, halls of my high school. I would have definitely been there with my smoky eye and my like glossy lip and bubblegum pink blush. And I thought it would be fun to recreate a makeup look that I was obsessed with in high school because this is very much like a throwback to high school. And um, I thought, yeah, this is the whole inspiration. So if you're interested in seeing how I recreated this makeup look from my high school days and seeing what products I used and why I did the things I did in high school, just keep on watching. All right, let's get this show on the road. Let's see how, how quickly I can do this makeup because ugh, I'm like Kamora Hall, girl. Like I take forever to do my makeup. So starting off with, I was always that girl that did my makeup base first and then did eyeshadow and eyes. Some people like to start off eyes first. I've never been that kind of girl. So we're gonna start off with uh, my base makeup. So my foundation, my powder. And like I said, this is definitely not gonna be a re complete recreation of my high school makeup it's going to be as modernized as i can possibly make it without you know um with w while still staying a true to the spirit but i also don't want to look busted so for foundation, I always struggled a little bit with my skin. I've always been really acne prone. So I was always um, full coverage, full coverage all the way, drag makeup, I cake face, yes, proud, a proud cake face. So I'm gonna go in with my Real Techniques sponge, my Maybelline Super Stay foundation, I have it in natural beige. This might be a little bit too light for me um, since I got it a few months back and we are definitely moving into late spring, early summer here. And I'm going to mix a tiny bit of Juvia's Place um, Velvety Matte Foundation and I have mine in Aruba 510. So hopefully between those two foundations, I can um, recreate my perfect skin tone. So Back in high school, I was not a primer person. Um, it was very much like such a newbie. <laughs> I was such a newbie. I mean, I still am to some extent, but in high school, I definitely didn't know what I was doing. And like I said, I was really acne prone, so I had a lot of I had a lot of acne. I wouldn't say I had a no. I take that back. I don't think I had a lot, but I definitely had like teenage acne. So I was always trying to cover up the acne, the scarring, and just like any blemishes on my face. So we're gonna go ahead and blend this foundation in. So I did not use powder in high school except for if I was using a powder foundation but I never set my foundation and I honestly would use more powder foundation now that I think about it than I would use liquid foundation because as a beginner it just felt easier for me to just like powder my face and I would always use the L'Oreal foundation, the pressed compact foundation. And for some reason, I, that felt really easy to me. So I, that's what I would use. So it didn't make sense for me to powder on top of that. And um, I am gonna go ahead and powder though right now because I kind of want to set it. And again, we're not trying to recreate the entire look. We're just trying to, you know, capture the spirit of it and modernize it. So, oh, did I even show you? This is the Bare Minerals. Uh, mineral veil the original I got this in like a little set a while back and we're just gonna go ahead and powder my face and just um, yeah just set my face Whew, y'all it's been so long since I did like a makeup video and I remember how long 
it took me to film these videos and edit these videos so i'm really trying not to spend too much time on my makeup and really thinking about when i'm speaking versus when i'm just doing my makeup so i can just like edit you know parts out or fast forward things it definitely is a science and an art to filming and editing um because I know y'all don't, I like, I would not want to sit for like an hour long makeup <laughs> video. So trying to keep this under 30 minutes, Lord help me. Okay, moving on to uh, cheek products. So bronzer, contour, blush. I did not contour in high school. Again, my makeup kit was very rudimentary. And honestly, back then, contouring was not really a mainstream thing um, particularly for like teenage high school you know makeup and so I just wasn't contouring but I do kind of want to contour today so let me see if I can pull out um, yeah let me pull for my Too Faced uh, the little black book of bronzers and I'm gonna reach for this um, Dark Chocolate Soleil. I totally forgot the name of it for a second. That's crazy. It's been so long since I've played around with this palette. I finished up three shades. I kind of want to pan this palette for summer. Wouldn't that be exciting? I think that would be exciting. So I'm going to reach in and grab that Dark Chocolate Soleil with just a nice um, contour brush here and contour because I've always liked how a really snatched contour looks and again this is high school revamped so let's get into it nothing too crazy just a little bit to you know uh, accentuate my cheekbones give me a nice structured look and then for illuminating bronzer I'm gonna go into snow bunny which is this sort of like glowy goldy bronzer and i'm just gonna touch this to my temples with a fluffy brush here um, above my contour just like that kind of all over my face and i think that's it i will put that away for now for blush i am gonna pull for my urban decay obsessed blush this is a light pink with almost like a purpley undertone to it lilac-y lavender undertone to it in high school i loved like these icy pinks i don't know <laughs> ah, i was definitely a character Ugh, i don't know. yeah for some reason i liked these really icy pinks and i i i worked them so i'm gonna reach into this blush and And then for eyes, y'all. Eyes are it's going to be it's going to be a statement. So, in high school, I was obsessed with black eyeshadow. Pause. <laughs> it's true. I for eyeshadow, all I would do would was would be to cover my entire lid with black eyeshadow. I wasn't even goth. I wasn't emo. I was I worked like you know cute bright clothes but for some reason i thought i looked stunning in solid black eyeshadow barely any blending um black eyeliner of course a cat eye of course but i just was like two black rings around my eyes at all times like i actually panned entire single black eyeshadows multiple ones because of how dedicated I was to this look. And so I had to recreate that look. I had to, there's no other way. I could not recreate the high school look um, with, uh, without using black eyeshadow. So I'm gonna use a palette that I've actually have used only maybe a couple of times. This is a Sho Amura mini palette and actually my brother bought this for me when he was in japan and it has um it just has six eyeshadows in it and they're all these like gray toned um eyeshadows and this is like the signature smoky eye palette we have a uh, deep black um that's matte a gray that's matte two really shiny silvers 
a shiny um, white and a matte white and classic smoky eye so I'm gonna use this palette for my eyes and I'm not gonna cover my entire eyelid with black that's just not acceptable for me today but a look that I would always do alongside like my black out eyeshadow was that I would use I would do a black and silver smoky eye so the lid would be silver and then I would blend it out with black and actually that was it was a look that my aunt taught me how to do and I actually used that look for my graduation and then like for years after it was my go-to show-stopping look was just this like silver and black smoky eye I, it wasn't that good i don't think it looked good on me i'm gonna give it a go again i'm gonna give it a shot so we're gonna start off with um priming i'm gonna find my eye eyeshadow primer here here it is it's just a little ulta one that came with a set and I am going to prime my eyes and then I'm gonna get into this Shimura black and silver eyeshadow look and let's see how it goes. And that's about as good as I care to get it right now. Ooh, I can't believe I was obsessed with this like black smoky look. And I, this is probably better than anything I ever did in high school and it's still not that great. I forget how hard makeup is. Ugh, it's such a skill. And I feel like once you get out of the habit of doing it for a while, it's a little bit hard to get back into. Yeah, I feel like I was okay with my makeup skill um, when I was like at the height of my makeup beauty YouTubing. But I definitely feel like my skill has suffered <laughs> since those days. So there's that for mascara. I'm gonna grab the mascara that I have on hand here, which is one I've really been enjoying. This is the Lash Brag Voluminizing Mascara from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I got the good stuff. Oh my goodness. I've shared this before on my channel when I was, you know, mainly a project panner and did makeup and beauty, but when I was in high school, I like was super poor, didn't have money to buy anything, and so the makeup that I did buy would be from garage sales or from thrift stores. There's definitely people who donate like slightly used makeup to thrift stores, and thrift stores do sell that stuff. I think depending on the on the thrift store, but the one that I went to did sell, you know, gently used makeup that people would donate and you could get a whole bag of used makeup for $20 and to me $20 was so expensive and I would beg my mom to um, buy me the bag of used makeup for $20 and she would sometimes do it. She didn't do it a lot but she definitely did buy me maybe two bags when I was in high school and that was the majority of my makeup was like this thrift store and makeup and I did not care. I put I put it all on my face and maybe that's why I had acne. <laughs> but um, I definitely didn't have a lot of acne and you know I never got like a crazy weird infection on my face or anything. So I guess it worked out. Um, okay, what else should I get into? Lips. So I'm gonna do a very classic lip for me in high school which was a nude lip. There was a L'Oreal Infallible Gloss, just like this one, that I was absolutely obsessed with. Um, it was slightly darker than this. I would say it was a little bit more brown than this shade, but it was just as sparkly. And I've always loved the scent of these. These smell like vanilla cupcake, the glitter is just so pretty. Um, the doe foot applicator was just so nice. And I used that lip gloss until it was absolutely dead and dying, super dried up. I could not get a drop out of that lip gloss anymore. I used it up to that extent. And so I'm gonna recreate a nude lip. I'm gonna use a Maybelline's um, Truffle Tease for the base and Urban Decay's 24-7 Glide-On Lip Pencil in Nighthawk. 
And then I'm gonna layer over the infallible gloss in Coral Sam. Um, yeah, the black and the silver eye look, I think I used it so much that I'm over it. I can't stand it. I'm like traumatized from how much I used it. It's hilarious how like our tastes change over the years and how you wouldn't be caught dead in something that you used to like absolutely live for back in the day. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And I hope you're doing wonderfully out there. I hope, you know, you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.